Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about specifically um, the Slate Audiobook Club and um, The Handmaiden's Tale. So The Handmaid's Tale, it was written by Margaret Atwood in the 80s, and the Slate Audiobook Club covers it with an in-depth read and then a review by Emily Bazelon, Megan O'Rourke, and Katie Waldman. Now, these are three incredibly intelligent, well-educated, well-spoken women talking about a very interesting book of, from the 80s that is incredibly relevant today. But this is one of the so I'm calling I'm calling out this this podcast and highly recommending it. Uh, it's it's one of the best hours of podcasting I've ever listened to. It's just really really solid. It's really fascinating the way they actually um, discuss the book and their commentary is really really interesting. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about their commentary a little later. But right now I want to get to the main point on why I'm talking about this today. So a while ago, I brought forward an idea. It's called the Garanox Principle. Um, I'm Scott Garibay, and I invented the Garanox Principle. So the Garanox Principle is a very succinct way to talk about an important topic for our times today. And that is, here's the Garanox Principle. An artist cannot clarify their art for anyone at any time. And there's a whole... So I'm not going to repeat that video here. There's a whole host of reasons they can't do this, right? That they really should not do this. And that the biggest problem of it is it fundamentally disrespects the the art, the flow of what happens when a piece of work, art is made. The creator makes the piece of art, the art experiencer experiences the piece of art. And we need to respect creators of art, and creators of art need to respect the art experiencers and allow them to have interpretations of their own and to, to receive that piece of, of art with the ability and the privilege and the right, I would say, to interpret it, okay? So, Margaret Atwood step, uh, became a Garanoxian, someone who has broken the Garanox principle when in the 80s she was asked about her book. They said, oh, you know, this is a great feminist novel, um, you know, do you actually they asked her specifically do you consider this a feminist novel and she said no this is not a feminist novel so Emily Bazelon Megan O'Rourke and Katie Waldman talked about this yesterday because the book has been received almost exclusively by fem by liberal feminists okay and they really are, are carrying it forward almost like a banner sometimes, and they're including it in their, you know, in their talks and in their discussions and in their movement, right? So one of the reasons why I'm bringing this forward is, you know, I'm, I'm conservative, and I've run afoul of this in the past where, where a great work of art that I have really enjoyed has, in my opinion, been ruined by the creator becoming a Garanoxian not respecting the art experiencer and saying, listen, there's a whole lot of people out there who read this work and interpret it in the following way. Well, I'm going to correct their understanding, right? And th this is so desperately needed today because the way our, the Garanox principle is so de desperately needed because of the way our, our society is structured. So art creators, in order to promote their art, are constantly in front of interviewers. And so we need to build a culture where both the questioners and the artist un need to understand just the basic flow of art, art creation, art experience, right? And that both people on both sides need to be respected and they need to be given room, right, to, to enjoy and grow and, and, and do all the things that are connected to their side of that flow, okay? So I was really, you know, so I was really fascinated. So, you know, I've run into an issue where something I really enjoyed the author comes in and says some, you know, clarification of what the art means. And then that, that book, there's no longer a mystery about that book or that song or that, that movie or that video game. They're saying, no, it just means this. It's simple. It's not really a piece of art. It's just like a pizza box that says, here's your hot pizza, right? You know, and it's just so frustrating, right? But I was really amazed to see Margaret Atwood 
is causing this Garanoxian principle. You know, she, she's she's becoming a Garanoxian. She's breaking the Garanox principle and has caused problems for Emily Bazelon, for Katie Waldman, and Megan O'Rourke, and all the liberal feminists who say, this is a great liberal feminist book, but the artist is denying that. Rather than, rather, and all that would have been required for this to be fixed is for that artist to just respect the art, the art experiencers and not say what their art meant except in their art, right? So that, that's what I'm doing today is I'm calling out this particular podcast because I've never seen anything that so clearly shows the Garanox principle as this podcast, okay? And, and I'm, also, I'm also talking about this again today because I really feel like we need to return back. So um, I was, we need to return back to this point where the Garanox principle is understood across the board and we can get reporters and interviewers to stop asking questions that make artists who are unaware of the Garanox principle, unaware how to be a higher artist, um, aware of it, right? And, um, and you know, it's, to me, it's really critical because a perfect example of this is, so I, you know, I was on YouTube, I went to the trending column and I see Camila Carbella, right? Now, it seems like she's a pop singer, I don't think I've ever heard any of her music, but there was a 28 minute interview on Beats One. It was free, it looked really high end, really high production. And I thought, oh, well, I see all these, you know, she must have j just dropped a new album or something. I'd really love to hear what Camila Carbello says about her, mu you know, says about her music and about, you know, being an artist and all those kind of things, right? So the first thing, you know, I, I clicked the button, right? And I'm not kidding. The first sentence out of her mouth is she says, I went on Instagram and I put a letter on there to explain the album. I dropped right out, you know, went to find new content. And the real reality is this, you know, this artist is telling me I don't respect the art experiencer. I'm going to tell the art experiencer what my work means. And this is for an album that just dropped. Like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. And I, I just feel desperately that this problem needs to get fixed. Just desperately needs to get fixed. This is my take. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Emily Bazelon, uh, Megan O'Rourke, and Katie Waldman. This is one of the most meta, top, meta podcasts I've ever heard in my life. These are you know, liberal feminists. And when I say they're liberal feminists, this is by their own words. I'm not labeling that. They all own those labels themselves, right? Now, I'm, I'm a fairly conservative guy, but I listen to a lot of liberal content. And the reason why is I really don't like to listen to people who I agree with. And the reason why is I don't really learn anything. I, I don't want to be in an echo chamber. And also, one of the things I've recognized is that the left, I think they are more self-aware generally than, than the right. And I feel like in their commentary, sometimes they're more honest. And so that's one of the reasons why I listen to so much liberal content, right? Even though I'm not liberal, I'm pretty conservative. So um, it was really amazing to hear them talk about this book because one of the things that's being said is, you know, the idea is Margaret Atwood said, we are heading toward a, a you know, we have a religious society that is going to suppress women's productive productive rights. So this is this entire, you know, podcast is these women's talking about that, you know. And one of the things that blew my mind was they 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 asked themselves, are we living in this society? Are we living in the handmade stale right now? Do we see strong reflections of what's in this book in our society? And they said, "No, we are not." Right? Which was, you know, which I was just so floored that they would acknowledge that that you know, women today do have many, many rights and privileges and uh, all many of the things that they've been fighting for have been achieved, right? And I think that's important because so often groups will fight for something and then not acknowledge it once it's been given or once it's been earned or once it's been, you know, you know what? The words given and earned are wrong. Once they have what they fought for, it's a better way of putting it, right? That they are then acknowledging it. So there's just so much truth and honesty. This is one of the most meta conversations I've ever heard in my life. And it is, you know, it's one of the best hours of podcasting I've ever heard. 
And, you know, because it is there, it, it bounced up against the Garanox principle. So I highly recommend Slate ABC Audio Book Club. That's what it stands for. The Handmaid's Tale. They talk about, they talk about feminism. They talk about literature. They talk about the 80s view of what today would be like. They talk about women's rights today, what they've been striving for and what has been achieved. They talk about um, the television show, right? And they talk about transitioning a famous work, a, a famous book into a successful television show, right? And I really am also, and it's really also fascinating because The Handmaid's Tale is part of this new crop of television that is going right at the throat of, of film and trying to compete directly with film, the big screen, which is really, really fascinating to me. Really, really interesting. So you got to check this out. It's really, really interesting. And please, if you're out there, uh, whatever you can, I, I really am hoping that, that the Garanox principle is understood and that we can return to a culture that, that where artists respect art experiencers. And when someone starts saying, hey, I believe this piece of art means X, Y, Z, and the artist doesn't agree with that, that the artist would say, you know what, hey, I don't agree with that. That's, that's really, you know, not my, not where I was intending to go. Say that to themselves and then say, my art speaks for itself, right? And I respect the right of art experiencers to receive my art, enjoy my art, and say what they, they mean. Because clarifying that piece of art is, you know, it's art. It's not, it's not objective. It's subjective. And I, I really feel that the Garanox principle needs to be adhered, you know, it needs to get some traction. Thank you.